our Silky Terrier just made it to the finals. And I'm gonna tell you all about it right here on the Doggy Dojo. Hi, my name is Trevor Smith with the Doggy Dojo and we had an incredible weekend. This weekend we got to compete at AKC Invitationals 2020. It was a really cool event and we've been here before with both our Silky Terrier Enya and our Shih Tzu Tsuki. They only invite the top five of each breed in AKC. So we were really honored to be invited this year with both our Shih Tzu and our Silky Terrier. First day on Friday is just one run. It's called Time to Beat. And basically it's just a practice round for the dogs to get used to the arena and the turf. And this year is particularly unique because of the current health crisis. There's a lot more things that were different and protocols in place um, in order to keep everybody safe. And so it was a more unique environment than our dogs were used to. So this Friday time to beat was crucial for us to see how our dogs would react to it. And both girls did awesome. They ran their runs perfectly clean. They got their qualification. They didn't have any faults for time to beat. So the next day was the first round of competitions. And the very first course they had to do was called jumpers. Jumpers is a series of obstacles that's based off using jumps, weaves, and tunnels. It's super fast and super fun. So first up to the plate was Suki. And this was good because Suki is kind of our tried and true. She's, we call her Queen Suki. She loves this. She actually thinks this whole event typically is for her. Like we asked everybody to come. It's like a big old party for her. She's so excited. And this helped my wife Mallory to really tune in and keen in on what the course was all about before she had to run our Silky Terrier, Enya. Suki was out the gate super fast. And we've actually had her jumping at four inches recently, but because she qualified for this event at eight inches, we had to jump her at eight inch height. So she wasn't quite used to more recently jumping to eight inch height, but she rocked it. And you you can see how bouncy she is throughout the whole course. Next up is Enya running this course and she was flying and just running and so much so she got a little bit ahead and you can see on course where she kind of had to slow herself down in order to make certain turns. And this is where we found out that Enya was not playing any games here at the competition. And she was ready to go all the way to finals. So how this works out is that there, this is just round one of four rounds to qualify them to see if they can make it into finals. And both Enya and Suki nailed round one. Now in round two is standard. And standard has obstacles like the A-frame, the dog walk and the seesaw. And so in this one, it's very unique in the fact that the dog has to hit these yellow contact zones on these pieces of equipment in order to not fault the obstacle. And the reason that this is in place is to keep the dog safe. If you have the dogs jumping off the top of a very tall A-frame, it's not gonna be good for anybody, not gonna be good for the dog, not gonna be good for the handler. So we have to keep the dog safe. So the dogs have to go and hit the yellow at the bottom of each each of these contacts. Once again, Suki was up first and it was up to her to kind of show us how the course was going to play out. And she rocked it again. It was just a nice, smooth and clean run. She had a good time. She was doing everything she needed to do. And it gave us a lot of information to help us understand what we needed to do for Enya. So in Enya in round two, standard run, she was fast again. And this time we weren't doing as much what we call rotational front crosses where we turn in front of the dog, but more blind crosses, blind front crosses. So that way we're just basically having the dog pass behind our back. Because in the first round we found out that it was slowing her down to do rotational front crosses. And in the second round, it was much easier to do blind crosses with her. And that was the end of day two. Enya and Suki were clean. And how it works out is you have to have clean runs because it is first off the dogs that are clean that are gonna be ranked higher than the dogs that have faults. And faults can be things like knocked bars, refusals where they bypass an obstacle and don't take the obstacle. So at the end of day two, they only take 14 dogs in her jump class into finals. So it was really important for us to keep on nailing our clean runs and to see what happens. So now 
it's day three. And mind you, this is our earliest day. We are up at the crack of dawn. We are at our show site by seven o'clock in the morning, which for us is super early because we're on Eastern Standard Time. And now it is Anya first and Suki, which kind of makes things a bit different because with yesterday's runs, we basically could feel out what Suki would do and that would help us with Enya. And Enya was more in line to make it to finals. Now, Suki was sitting at like 26th place, so she had somewhat of a chance, but Enya was really so close that we needed to make sure she got her clean runs. And she did, she rocked it. It was a great clean run and she had a lot of fun and she did a great job. And Suki did a fantastic job too. She ran the course, she was bound all over the place and she nailed it and was clean. So, so far we have had four clean runs, all perfect scores into our last run of the day. And this, I gotta tell you, this brought knots to our stomach. It was so tense because this was make or break. If she ran this clean, there's nothing stopping her from getting into finals because she was sitting at that point in sixth place. And what happened is like I told you, the fact is that some of the dogs that were ahead of her got some faults and that dropped them below Enya because she had a perfect score on the rest of her runs. So, because she had a perfect score on um, her round one, round two, and round three, Enya and Mallory step up to the plate. It's not the easiest course in the world. It's a jumpers course, but it's fast. They make this huge, speed turn for Enya to go flying from one end of the course to the other end of the course. And it, to make sure your dog doesn't go off course when they're flying across is can be very, very difficult. And to make matters even more difficult, Enya was tired. This is a big thing. It's a huge event. There's lots of dogs, lots of people. And for Enya, this is where things got tricky for her because last year, she was one fault away from getting to finals. She had a refusal on obstacle and that took her out of finals. And so we just knew that, you know, anything could happen and we need Enya to have a fast clean run. And she went through it and she flew through it and she was tired in the very beginning and kind of sluggish, but she just kicked it up a whole nother notch and a whole nother level. She pushed hard all the way to the end. And we were just, and like super bliss mode. We did not know what to do. <laughs> you did it! <laughs> you did it! Nice! This is the very first time my wife Mallory has ever had the chance to get to finals and she is ecstatic and there's nothing else that could break this moment. And really for a lot of people and a lot of dogs, getting to finals is like the thing. Like that's all people really are hoping to get to. The rest is icing and cherry on top. If they get, make it first place into the finals, it's fantastic. But we were just ecstatic that we made it to finals and we made it this far. She went clean all four rounds and she ended up in third spot to get it into finals. Suki was next. At this point, we're relaxed, we're having fun because we already got one of our dogs in finals and Suki, you know, she is not the speedy lightning like Enya, but she is so steady. And steady dogs can sometimes have a chance to get in the finals too if they run clean and they run fast. Suki ran fast. Suki ran so clean and she actually had such a great weekend that she almost made it to finals. She would have been one of the dogs going to finals, but there was a Shih Tzu, and mind you, Suki is a Shih Tzu who is faster than her, and they got to go to finals. And how it works out is they only take one dog or the top dog of each breed in the list. So out of the top 20 people, if two of them are both Papillons, then only one Papillon gets to go to finals. And so it can be to a point where Suki actually, she made it to the 18th spot and she would have gone to finals and, but this wonderful dog that's never done finals before, this awesome new Shih Tzu we've never met before. The handler that ran her was a fantastic handler and he did a great job. And we were so excited that he would join us for the finals with our Silky Terrier as well. Now it's time for finals. And the thing is, at this point, you would think we have even more knots in our stomach because we're on live TV, everybody's watching, it could be stressful. And yes, there is some tension in the air, but getting to the finals, like I said, is the cake and the rest is icing and cherry on top. We are happy with how the running order was set place because they're doing small to tall, meaning Enya at eight inches would be in the very first round and we'd be able just to go ahead and get it over with and have some fun. And so 14 dogs line up 
for finals. There's a little bit of a walkthrough, making sure that everyone knows where they're, where they're going throughout the course. It looks like a really super fun course. There is one backside in the very beginning, and this is typical. They usually add some sort of tricky element just to add a bit, a little bit more fun and challenge into the courses. And how they run it is they also run it from the last place dog. So they run 14 to 13 to 12th dog to the 11th dog and all the way down to one. So the dogs, that are going down to one typically are going faster and faster and faster and it's all basically time to beat you have to run clean get no faults and it's super fun because then each dog that runs if their time is the fastest they get to sit in what's called the hot seat and they sit in that little area and they wait to see if the dog that comes up next beats their score so first dog does a great run second dog also great run and it goes through and it's finally time for Inya to run her course. He steps up to the plate, and lo and behold, she rocks it. It's an amazing run. I was so impressed and so happy for Mallory. She did fantastic with our Silky Terrier and had a great time. She got her to do the backsides, made sure she collected over the jumps. As she's going over the jumps into the seesaw, she did the front cross across the seesaw over the top of the jumps. Got her to bypass one end of the tunnel and get into the next end of the tunnel all the way into the weep poles, running as fast as she can around the last loop to the final home stretch. And she did a fantastic job. And we knew Inya was going into this super tired, but she ran her little heart out and we didn't know what was gonna happen. And the top four dogs get an extra special prize. So we had to sit there and wait and see how the rest of the dogs did. And they started calling up every single dogs from last place all the way to first place and they're calling names and they're calling names. We don't hear Inya's name, so we think, you know, Inya did a great job, but then all of a sudden, we hear Inya's name. She got third place. We couldn't be happier. It was fantastic, and she got to take her picture next to the first, second, and fourth place dogs, and guess who was in second place? The Shih Tzu, our new friend who did a fantastic job for his very first finals event, and we couldn't have been happier to sit next to and stand next to this wonderful Shih Tzu with our Silky Terrier, Enya. It was a great event, we had so much fun, and I hope this maybe inspires you guys to get started on your agility path. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. I love a dog agility, as you can see. It's a fantastic sport. It's a great way to connect and bond with your dog and have some fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already and you love dog sports and you want to learn more how to get your dog started in all sorts of dog sports, whether it be dog agility, dog diving, barn hunt, fast cat, and more, hit that subscribe button, leave a like on this video, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to make sure you don't miss a single video here on the Doggy Dojo. As always, have some fun with your dogs, and we'll see you all next time.